Okay, finishing up our solution of this NMR problem that I kind of created on the board, but it's a, it's a pretty accurate representative representation of what this compound would look like. Um, we were working on the aromatic region, and I had written on my table that at 7, we had two groups of two, each of which are doublets. Now, you could get into all kinds of trouble interpreting this, but you should immediately commit to an aromatic ring and the most common aromatic ring, which is a benzene. So I'm going to write a benzene down. Benzene. Now, what's the deal with this benzene? This benzene has a total of four hydrogens on it. And I'm just going to draw them in sort of randomly. There's four hydrogens somehow attached to this ring. I haven't committed to anything yet. There are four hydrogens. If there are four hydrogens, there are two substituents. Okay? I'm going to work on that in a minute when I put my fragments down. All right? Finally, there is a peak at nine parts per million and it has an area of one, nine parts per million. So, nine, this peak would probably be a little higher. It would probably be about ten, I think, but um, I'll put the nine. The nine is not going to lead you astray. An area of one, okay, singlet. Now, this is one of the shifts I gave you in class, and nine is indicative of the aldehyde group, which looks like this and has one connection on it. When you see this, these are shifts you should jump right on. You should draw that. Okay. Now, I want to put these various pieces down and start doing my piecework and my bookkeeping. Piecework wise, I've got an isopropyl, I've got a benzene ring with two substituents on it, and I have this aldehyde group. I'm going to write these down. So now I'm doing a little erasing. And you'll notice, by the way, that this unsaturation number, which is four, one ring and four double bonds is four. And this has an unsaturation of one. And if you add those up, you get an unsaturation number of five, which is exactly what we got when we did the calculation. So this interpretation is a good interpretation. Okay, what are my pieces? So I'll just put piecework. I am very committed to this group. In fact, I would say I'm married to it. I'm so committed to it. Good marriage, too, long marriage. Okay, this has one connection on it. It is a terminal piece. Okay. This was shown by the doublet next to the uh, six next to one and the one next to many. Okay, on the other end of the molecule, I have to have an aldehyde. An aldehyde group is also a terminal group. So it is very um, logical to put these at opposite ends of the molecule. What's in the middle? This aromatic ring has to be in the middle because it has two substituents on it. So I'm going to write my aromatic ring in here. Now the question is, where do you put those substituents on the aromatic ring? And I want you to think about various organizations on that ring. If I had a ring, and I put the hydrogens on like this, this is one option. That would leave my substituents here and here. Okay? That's one option. I want you to think about what the splitting is like. Okay? What is the splitting like for that? Would that give two doublets? Another option is this. with the substituents here and here. Would that give two doublets? I want you to think about that. How many different types of hydrogens do you have? 